It's very interesting to really see that in the future of the treatment of CML, still is drugs coming into our armamentarium. Is uh, even in the in, in a situation where we have uh, multiple drugs from choose from, and we have a very high rate. It is a very very good um, situation where we have more drugs that may really uh, fill the holes of patient who may be intolerant, may be resistant, or maybe really have advanced phase of the CML. In this regard, it's really really a, a light of hope to really see this drug uh, coming to to the clinical trials. Aurora kinase inhibitors is a, a new family of, of drugs that also has some uh, potential in the future treatment of CML. Um, what is very unclear, what really will be the role in, in, in chronic phase, considering the, the great success of the drugs that we are available. However, I think we still need to really introduce drugs that may control uh, a more advanced phases of CML, accelerated phase or blast phase, in which uh, situations we now that with the current uh, drugs, we still don't have uh, a very, very high success. ABLE 001 is a very interesting drug that is in the development phase at this point. Uh, what is very interesting that uh, does not really bind to the classical ATP binding pocket that all other TKIs are really main mechanism of action. However, it is uh, binding to another side of the, of the BCR ABLE protein, in this case of the ABLE protein, who really, really is involved in the 3D uh, conformation of this, of this uh, um, gene of this protein, right? Um, seems like a, there is a very, very um, interesting data in, in cell lines and also in the phase one trial where we have seen an important um, efficacy of this drug. Um, I think in the future, I think we're going to see more how this drug may be able to be developed even uh, as a single agent or in combination in patients who already fail other tyrosine kinase inhibitors. In general, uh, about 90% to 92% of patients with CML will, especially those who present in chronic phase CML, will have a very durable, quick, major molecular as well as cytogenic remission to an appropriately selected second generation tyrosine kinase inhibitor and also to a first generation tyrosine kinase inhibitor in about 85 to 80 percent of cases. Um, so the majority of CML patients respond very, very well. However, there is a subset, about 5 to 8 percent, who could either have a very delayed uh, acquisition of a major molecular remission or a complete molecular remission, or in about 3 to 5 percent who may actually have baseline resistant uh, ABLE kinase mutations uh, that make them resistant to a primary therapy. And then there's a third subset of patients who have a durable major or complete molecular remission for a few years but then lose it. And the reasons they could lose it are either because they, they become non-compliant or it could be because they have become resistant by acquisition of a secondary mutation. Um, so in those cases, I think uh, we're looking at new exploratory options with combinations. So one of the combinations, like you mentioned, is adding interferon to the satinib. And there's some early data that suggests that this could eradicate the molecular clones and produce uh, deeper remissions, uh, especially it's being evaluated in patients who have had a tyrosine kinase inhibitor and are progressing. Uh, some of the other combinations that we at our center are excited about in clinical trials format are combining JAK inhibitors. And we have seen in uh, patients who either did not achieve a complete molecular or major molecular with uh, TK alone, when we add back a JAK inhibitor, we're able to get them uh, into complete molecular remission in, in small subsets. Uh, the two others that I think would be very exciting are adding immune checkpoint-based drugs, such as nivolumab. And there is a study of the satinib plus nivolumab in patients who have been on uh, a TKI for more than a year without achieving a complete molecular or major molecular response to see if we could activate the T cells uh, to push down the responses. And there is rationale in CML that uh, there may be overexpression of PD-1 on T cells. This has been shown by uh, different investigators and that by using a PD-1 inhibitor, we could increase the T cell activity against the CML cells. Um, so we think that these are probably ongoing. It's very early to know if they're going to show clear benefit. Um, and they're all being tried mainly in the setting of patients who are resistant or relapsed after one or two TKIs. So I think we're at least a few years away from trying to bring these into the front line 
uh, and um, I think for now the second generation TKI is up front or the standard. So in the last year, the field of chronic myeloleukemia and the therapy with tyrosine kinase has been a very successful area where we have multiple tyrosine kinase inhibitors very successful in the front line and even in the second line. Of course, the introduction of second generation TKI has changed the paradigm to really obtain this early molecular response and open the possibility to increase the number of patients that really are able to be part of this already real-time uh, treatment uh, discontinuation um, trials, right? We have been studying this for five years, but I think the, the most important thing that we are really uh, experiencing in 2017 is the fact that this now is a reality, it's not a trials anymore, and we start to discuss this uh, discontinuation with patients that we've been followed by by three, four, five, or even 10 years in our practices who may really still experience chronic side effects and still may have what we call a financial toxic side effects. And this is really, really what everyone is excited in the world of uh, CML. Of course, in the future, I think one of the, the goals and one of the, the hopes is to try to see how we're gonna even increase the number of patients who can be safely discontinued if not uh, with single TKI after additional drugs as we see this year with ruxolotinib or even the data with interferon alpha who may uh, increase the population of patients who are really uh, free of drug for a long period of time.